It is, uh, <clears throat> thank you for that. It is wonderful to be here, <clears throat> wonderful to be back with Andy McCauley and the great folks at the New England Center and Home for Veterans. It's a national leader in serving and housing veterans, so we're really proud to be able to stand alongside you and your fantastic team. Um, it's an honor to be with Mayor Wu, who is a compassionate leader on so many issues for our great capital city. Congressman Stephen Lynch, a champion of veterans and military families and just a terrific partner. We're honored that he's here today with us. Chair Jerry Cassidy is here as well, the Joint Committee on Veterans and Federal Affairs. Uh, Senator and National Guard Judge Advocate General Lydia Edwards is with us. Counselor Ed Flynn. Secretary of Veterans Services John Santiago. Deputy Secretary Andrea Gail Bennett. Our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities at Augustus. I also want to recognize the former uh, Department of Veterans Services Secretary Coleman Nee, who uh, did a lot of advocacy during his time years ago. We appreciate you, Coleman. I think most importantly to all of the uh, veterans here, we thank you for your service. We thank you for allowing us to visit today. We thank you for continuing to inspire us with your courage and resilience. <laughs> is a Marine, always a Marine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, in our administration, we are committed to honoring our veterans in our actions and in our words, and that's what you've seen this year. We were able to appoint the state's first cabinet level Secretary of Veterans Services, John Santiago, who has, with his with his passion and his brilliance, expanded veteran engagement and worked to improve services statewide. With help from our federal delegation, we invested in the beautiful, world-class living facilities that veterans deserve at Holyoke and in Chelsea. We created a Veterans Equality Review Board to help make sure that all veterans are getting the federal benefits that they are entitled to. And we filed the HERO Act, the most comprehensive veteran services legislation in over 20 years. It would increase the disabled veteran annuity, expand access to mental health services, remove the fee for the specialty veterans license plate, and so much, much more. So we look forward to working with our friends in the legislature right on, uh, on that. We also filed a, uh, an important piece of legislation the Affordable Homes Act, which would significantly increase funding for veterans housing. You see, our mission is to make Massachusetts the national leader in veterans services. We believe we are, but we want to continue to do even more. We want to make sure that we are providing every single veteran with the care and the support they so deeply earned. And one of the first things we talked about when Secretary Santiago was appointed was finding a solution to veterans homelessness. Those conversation, that work has been ongoing and today, we're announcing a big step forward in that mission. We're proud to launch a campaign to end veteran homelessness in Massachusetts. <laughs> At $20 million, it will be the largest investment to end veterans homelessness in our state's history. Here's what it will look like. Currently in Massachusetts, it's estimated that between five to 600 veterans are homeless on any given night, with hundreds more facing housing insecurity. Our goal is to reach out to every single one of them with the offer of permanent, quality, affordable housing that they deserve and that they need. Our goal is to be there for them just as they were there for us. I also want to recognize cities across the state for the work that they've been doing, including Lowell, Lynn, New Bedford, and as well as Boston. We want to build on that network and continue to make sure that statewide, veterans in every community can get the services, the support, and the homes that they need. The End Veterans Homelessness Campaign is backed by ARPA funding, thanks to our congressional delegation, and to our state legislature for setting funds aside. We're gonna channel these resources into veteran housing services and infrastructure all across the state. 
I want to thank our Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities, Ed Augustus, and his team for their critical role in supporting that effort. As part of this campaign, we're also going to do more to provide necessary mental health and substance use services. These challenges are so often rooted in the sacrifices veterans made in their service to our country, and addressing these needs is part of what we owe them. Secretary Santiago is going to say more about our strategy. I'll just say it's comprehensive with a single overriding goal to make sure that every veteran in Massachusetts has a stable and secure place to call home. And the reason is simple. No one who served our country should ever have to worry about having a roof over their heads, Amen. period. <laughs> this is something everyone here believes, on, believes in. This is a belief that we're going to act on together as a state. It's our shared commitment to restore and ensure dignity, to provide hope, and to keep a promise to our veterans that they will never be forgotten or left behind. Thank you everyone up here for your continued partnership and your support. And it is an honor for me to now introduce someone who has helped make this very campaign possible, as well as provided such incredible assistance and support to families across Massachusetts. And that is the Honorable Congressman Stephen Lynch. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Governor, for that kind introduction. And I want to thank all of our veterans who are here today for your service to our country, not only for your own courageous service, but the example that you provide to young men and women who wear the uniform today in active duty, uh, whether that be in Syria or Iraq or Afghanistan or uh, anywhere across the globe. Uh, your example really continues to inspire them. So thank you to all our veterans. I do want to say a little bit about the way the American Rescue Plan Act worked. Uh, so following the pandemic, or in the midst of the pandemic, really, we realized that businesses and states were not generating the tax revenue that would normally sustain some of the programs that we, we are committed uh, to, to funding. And so at the federal level, we, we made a decision that we would fund the states with, with ARPA money. But rather than telling people what to spend the money on, we said to our governors, uh, we're going to allocate this money, but it will be your discretion, it'll be your decision and your priority that will decide where this money will go. And uh, we, we said that to the governors, we said that to our mayors and, and state legislatures, and uh, I am just so grateful that when we sent federal money back to the states uh, through ARPA, that our governor, our mayor, our legislature had as a priority, a major priority, the welfare of our veterans. Not only, not only to put a roof over their head, but the wraparound services that some of our veterans need. You know, we had a model of service in Iraq and Afghanistan that was unprecedented, where we had millions of veterans from across this country who were serving multiple tours of duty. I remember one of my last visits to, to Afghanistan, I sat with a small platoon of uh, 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 army and, and uh, uh, also some, uh, some Afghan loyalist soldiers. And I, I asked our men and women, I said, which tour are you on? And uh, I said, how many here on their first tour? And, and a few of them raised their hand. How many are on their second tour? And a few more raised their hands. I got all the way up to seven tours of duty before I ran out of uh, uh, riflemen on the, in that platoon. So the, the, the idea is that multiple tours like that has a traumatic effect on young men and women in uniform. And so the need that we're, we're addressing here is, is long-term need. Uh, as those veterans age, um, no doubt some of the trauma that, that they experience will, will present. And uh, they'll, need, they'll need medical care, psychiatric care. They'll need a place to live in many instances. And uh, again, I'm just so grateful that 
that our leadership here at, the, at this state level identified the needs of our, our veterans in, you know, you show your priorities but way, by where your funding goes. And the fact that Governor Healy is directing this $20 million, that's a huge chunk of ARPA money, to homeless veterans. And, and, and as well, uh, Mayor Wu has also identified those same veterans as a priority in her, in her vision, in her administration. And of course, the legislature here uh, has there is no legislature in, in the country that has done more for our veterans. You know, Massachusetts is the, is the example that all the other states try to emulate. Uh, they've passed so much legislation that is geared to uh, caring for and, and respecting our, our veterans that uh, every other state seeks to follow our model. So uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, I, I want to thank all of the Andy McCauley and, and his whole team that do the work every single day. God bless you and God bless all of our veterans. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman Lynch. Good afternoon, everyone. It's, thank you. Yeah. It's great to be here among so many veterans, advocates, friends and allies of the veteran community. Thank you, Andy uh, and your staff for doing all what you do day in, day out. You are the epitome of what it means to support and serve our veteran community, and you set the standard here in Boston, and we are grateful for what you do and what Lena do each and every day. Congressman Lynch, thank you for your unwavering support for our veteran community for decades, and for bringing home those federal dollars so we could put them to good use here. Mayor Wu, since our days supporting Puerto Rican veterans in, in the South End, and Councilor Flynn, You've been an advocate and an ally, and it's great to be with you all. And to my legislative, former legislative colleagues, I learned in the State House how to support veterans at a policy level, and those lessons have stuck with me every single day. And I'm grateful for that, for that partnership and for our continued work. As Governor Healy outlined, today is about taking another big step in our mission to honorably serve those who served us. And not just with sentiments, but by putting forth the largest targeted investment to end veteran homelessness in our state's history. Today's announcement builds on the Healy Driscoll administration's commitment to lead the nation when it comes to veteran services. I am proud that we've, have, we've enacted the most significant investment ever in our state budget when it comes to veteran services. I'm proud that we secured federal funding and broke ground on a brand new soon to be brand new, Holyoke Veterans Home. And we just finished construction at the Chelsea Veterans Home a couple of months. Both homes are going to double today's residential capacity in just a couple years. And I'm proud that we are engaging more and more veterans each and every single day at our office, at the Executive Office of Veteran Services. But there is still so much more to do, especially when it comes to housing. From the very first days of her administration, Governor Healy made it very clear to everyone in and outside the administration that our state's housing crisis is our number one priority. Her challenge to us in government was clear and simple. Be innovative, work together, and get it done. And that's what today is about. Under her direction, we began formulating a plan to really end veterans' homelessness as soon as possible and sought to do so in a collaborative fashion with federal players, our nonprofit providers, anyone who's supporting our veteran community, because that's the only way we get big things done. So alongside Secretary Augustus, we've put forth a plan to get us to functional zero, effectively ending veterans' homelessness in Massachusetts. You may be asking, what is functional zero? And when is it achieved? Functional zero is when veterans' homelessness is a rare, brief, and non-reoccurring episode. It's where all homeless veterans have been identified and housing opportunities for veterans have been made available in an integrated manner. And per the last annual count, we're talking about 545 homeless veterans, the majority living in transitional housing, and about 30 who are completely unsheltered. 
This is not only possible to solve, it's the right thing to do, and Secretary Augustus and I, in consultation with many of you out there today, have come up with a five-pillar plan to get us there. Number one, it starts with giving our frontline veteran service providers the tools and resources they need to find vet homeless veterans, provide wraparound services, help them secure housing, and in order to do this, we have to act with purpose and act with urgency and make use of all the available tools out there and do it in a coordinated fashion. But we can't house veterans if the supply is not there. That's why we'll be committing at least $10 million to support those out there seeking to invest and build veteran housing. I should say this is in addition to the 200 plus units right now that we are working on in Chelsea to build veteran preference housing. Hopefully we'll have a groundbreaking later on this year. The additional pillars revolve around empowering current service providers with technical assistance. And for those organizations we currently fund, making sure we're all on the same page when it comes to aligning our supportive services to get veterans in stable housing. And lastly, we'll be creating an advisory council to share feedback and better coordinate source resources amongst federal and state players. This is all so central to the campaign, the coordination of services. These five pillars make up the backbone of our End Veterans Homelessness campaign. And Secretary Augustus and I look forward to working in partnership with many of you to get us to functional zero. And speaking of the Secretary, I'd like to invite him up here to share a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Uh, thank you, Governor Healy, for your leadership on ending veterans homelessness in Massachusetts. From day one, the governor has prioritized housing. Her mission has been clear, lower the cost of housing and create more units. And I wanna thank Secretary Santiago for his partnership in this endeavor. And I wanna thank you for your service to our country. With your experience and medical expertise, you've seen the face of veterans homelessness and are uniquely qualified to lead this initiative. And I'm proud to be part of the governor's team working with you. No veteran should ever be homeless, period. In, since 2023, approximately 1,500 veterans have interacted with our homeless providers across Massachusetts. It is now our chance uh, to serve the people who have served our nation. And I'm convinced that working with the Executive Office of Veterans Affairs, we can provide education and outreach to strengthen our connections with veterans who are experiencing homelessness. We can find permanent housing solutions to our veterans and we can work with our community-based providers to ensure supportive housing and wraparound services. We can and we will accomplish these goals together. I'm proud to work with these leaders and proud to introduce Mayor Wu, who's been a strong housing advocate and a great partner to end veterans homelessness. Mayor Wu. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, Secretary Augustus, and thank you to everyone for the incredible hard work that has gotten us here today. Um, we truly are an example for the rest of the nation, and this approach of an intergovernmental, all hands on deck, not just putting a commitment out there, but putting the resources and having a clear action plan, it, it comes about as a result of a lot of targeted, focused work. And I'm so grateful to the governor, to your entire team, Secretary Santiago, and all of your cabinet who have had a role in getting us here. So thank you so much for inviting us to be part of it as well. Um, we represent this federal, state, and local collaboration that really can, get, can tackle any challenge and get it done. Um, Boston is facing our fair share of challenges and, and needs that we're working in community to tackle every single day, but we are doing so in an unprecedented moment also of resources and collaboration. This year, we received two of the largest ever grants that uh, the city of Boston has ever gotten from the federal government when it comes to our ability to conduct on-street outreach, to tackle homelessness, and to get 
our community members off the street with specific vouchers or with um, programs that are allowing us to create, build, and, and wrap around services into new housing. And so I wanna thank Congressman Lynch uh, and our entire federal delegation, there was a $16.5 million grant that Boston received for the very first time in a very competitive atmosphere. And it is thanks to the work of um, our team across all levels that we were able to demonstrate the capacity and proven success to be able to secure those resources. And just recently, in the last two months, we received the largest ever $45 million grant from the federal government to continue our work on homelessness overall, including specifically tackling uh, veterans' homelessness along with the state. So thank you for all that you do for thank us you. at the city level. Um, the state has been an, a remarkable partner on housing, on veteran services in every possible way. We are so grateful and thankful to work, with, work alongside this administration, which is facing challenges at a scale never before experienced, and combating that with collaboration at a scale never before experienced as well. I will double down on reinforcing that housing is a human right for everyone. But those willing to lay down their lives in defense of our nation and our home, for veterans not to have a place to sleep at night is a particular injustice that we cannot let stand. And that's why I am especially proud today to stand here with this team, legislators, administrators, leaders, community members, to stand behind the governor's plan for making deeply needed investments in housing, in mental and behavioral health treatment and supports, in resources for substance use, in basically taking down every single barrier that might exist for veterans to access the housing, the community, the stability that they deserve and that we all benefit from. Uh, we are proud to be partners in this work at the city level. I'm joined here today by members of our team at the local level as well. We have our Chief of Housing, Sheila Dillon, our Chief of Human Services, Jose Masso. Thank you for all that you and your teams do. Um, our Veterans Commissioner would have been standing right here in line to, uh, to, to beam very proudly about this, but Commissioner Santiago is actually in D.C. advocating and uh, working alongside veterans from Massachusetts at the Veterans of Foreign Wars Convention in D.C. So uh, we thank Elliot for representing the team as the Community Relations Specialist here uh, for, from the Veterans Commission. And thank you for all of that work on the ground that has really shown how Mass Massachusetts and Boston can lead in tackling the specific barriers, person by person, community by community. Um, taken all together, our efforts have collectively resulted in a 50% reduction in the number of veterans experiencing homelessness in Boston over the past decade. And we are nowhere near satisfied with that number. We're even prouder and more determined to be part of this broader mission represented by the leadership here today and with today's announcement to end homelessness for all of our veterans. So I wanna thank uh, US Navy veteran, president and CEO of the New England Center for Homeless Veterans, Andy McCauley, for hosting us, for being such a strong partner. Uh, our stand down uh, event at, on City Hall Plaza was bigger than ever this last year and we'll look to continue bringing those services directly into community. Um, is it, am I introducing Andy or is it Lord Lydia? Yeah, bring Andy. Okay, so I, am, I get to um, proudly invite up our host for today and such an important leader for the entire city and region, Andy McCauley. Thank you, Your Honor. Congressman Lynch, Your Excellency Governor Healy, Your Honor Mayor Wu, Senator Edwards, our senator, state senator, legislators, secretaries Augustus and Santiago, guests, visitors, partners, supporters. On behalf of the New England Center and Home for Veterans, its board of directors, represented today by Colonel Gary Correa, United States Marine Corps retired, its dedicated staff, and most importantly, its veteran residents and all veterans. I want to welcome all of you here. I want to convey our collective gratitude for your leadership and support of those who have served. The New England Center and Home for Veterans mission, its sole focus since its founding here in Boston 35 years ago has been to support veterans who experience challenges in their lives following their military service. Although cited here in Boston, the center serves veterans from throughout the Commonwealth and although located here in Massachusetts, as Congressman Lynch will attest, 
The center serves veterans from across the nation. I personally have had the privilege of being part of the center team since 2011, some 13 years now. I actually am originally from here in Boston, born in Dorchester, and grew up largely on the South Shore. I spent the first 17 years of my life before leaving for the Navy in 1976 and returned to Massachusetts after active duty. So now I've lived almost half my life here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. However, more than half of my life was spent in a Navy career living and serving across the country and around the world. And I can say with absolute conviction and certainly from personal experience and observation that this state, as was originally proposed to me by then Secretary Nee, that Massachusetts leads the nation and the city of Boston lead the nation in honoring and supporting its military veterans. Massachusetts leads in, support, in supporting veterans because its people understand the importance of and the sacrifices inherent in military service. In Massachusetts here, they understand the obligation that we, as a community and as a nation, take on when a young person raises their right hand and as all the veterans, you veterans here, have and known in the past, pledge potentially your all to support and defend the Constitution and the freedoms and principles that we as a nation hold most dear. Massachusetts leads in supporting its veterans because of the commitment of its leaders and public officials as, as exemplified here today at the national level, the state level, and here in the city of Boston. Governor Healy, thank you from the center, from all veterans for initiating this comprehensive campaign to ensure that Massachusetts is able to achieve functional zero in homelessness among veterans. The staff here knows that this, is, this important goal cannot be accomplished alone, but can only be realized through a coordinated, collaborative effort combining national, state, city, government, private sector providers, volunteers, and advocates. Only that way can we ensure that every person who has served this nation has a home here? We are confident that under the overall guidance and leadership of Secretary Santiago, who has brought vision, understanding, and experience to the Executive Office of Veteran Services, that the statewide team here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts will make great strides and achieve what we all strive for. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Thank you so much, Andy. Um, I also want to acknowledge with us today a gold star dad and uh, a tremendous advocate in our legislature on behalf of all military families, and that's Representative Steve Zaros. Steve, thank you. And rounding out today's program is a uh, service member herself, uh, a colleague in government and the legislature, and State Senator Lydia Edwards. Thank you, thank you all. Um, I wanted to again echo the thanks and gratitude to the governor for your leadership, to Mayor Wu, to Congressman Lynch, to Secretary Santiago and Secretary Augustus. Uh, the team is strong, we are integrated as as colleagues right now, and I want you to know at all levels of government, we have an alignment when it comes to veterans. We believe in the dignity, we know the sacrifice, and we also know more importantly that when we think of the individual veteran, there's a whole wraparound family, partner, children that also is part of the package deal as well. I'm a military brat. My mother, well, I'm not a brat anymore, but my mother, uh, but I'm military. Uh, my mother served in the uh, military for 23 years in the United States Air Force. On October 30th of 2023, I commissioned directly into the United States Army National Guard, and I'm a JAG officer, first lieutenant. I did so in part because it's part of my family. It's what we do. Generations, all of us, one of us has served. But it becomes even more prevalent now as a leader in the Senate, but and also as a direct service person to other service people, how much this moment and this money is necessary. You see, part of my job is to prepare the soldiers before they go to deploy. We have a will event and the team of JAG attorneys. We line people up and we sit them down and we ask them where do they want things to go if they don't come home. 
And it's something that really hits you quite firmly when the young man that you're about to sit down with says, ma'am, can I go to the bathroom? And you think, he literally just asked permission to go to the bathroom, and now we're about to sit down and, and write his will in case he doesn't come home. Then I bookend on the other side. I'm part of a lot of yellow ribbon events where we welcome them home. And there's tables all around of all the services, whether it's for mental health, whether it's for religious, and I represent the legal services component. And it's part of hearing what happened, what services you need, how do I follow up with you? How are we gonna deal with this moment? And they come back caring a lot. And it's so important then that when we say welcome home soldier, they actually have a home to go to. That is what this is about. That is this moment. It isn't just talk. I've worked with every single one of these individuals. Our hearts and the, are, are in line and the mission is clear. We are going to house veterans. We are going to end homeless veterans in the state of Massachusetts. But I want to also acknowledge that the wraparound services that I know that each one of us is dedicated to not only includes mental health services and dealing with substance use abuse, but Andy, uh, I've seen the work here specifically when it comes to MST, military sexual assault as well. That's incredible that we name it and we acknowledge that it happens to a lot of veterans, a lot of our uh, women veterans especially. It's a wraparound service and necessary that we deal with that as well. When we, and I want to thank uh, uh, Councillor Flynn, uh, when we were counselors together, he specifically held a hearing for women veterans to make sure that, again, when we said welcome home, we welcomed them with the respect and dignity acknowledgement that there might be a different way that we need to acknowledge her service. Not a less than, not a better than, but a different way. I want to thank you, um, Councillor Flynn, for that. So we're going to continue to do that good work. We've moved the bomb bill along. We have a lot to get done. And I just want to give a shout out again to all the veterans. But there's another set of people who also serve while their loved ones are serving abroad. And that's their partners and the children. I've been one of them. We can't forget about them. Housing that veteran also includes them. So I appreciate also when we think about the housing, the units, not just small one SRO units, but looking at family housing as well for veterans because it's a whole unit. So welcome back to all the veterans, and we will continue to make sure you can actually have a home to go to. Uh, thank you so much, Senator, and uh, thank you to everyone who is here today. Thank you to Andy and the fantastic team. Uh, particular thanks on my behalf to John Santiago, who's doing a tremendous job as our Secretary of Veterans Services. And uh, I'm mindful that this is a day when a lot of people are taking to the polls, um, something that people have, have uh, fought and died for in, in our democracy. Um, and I am very hopeful and heartened when I get to stand alongside folks like this. You see local leaders, you see state leaders, you see federal leaders, you see our nonprofits, and you see veterans and military families. And so I hope today uh, we leave this event uh, with optimism, uh, with hope, certainly with the can-do spirit and the resilience that our veterans and service members inspire to go out and uh, complete this particular mission, which is to end homelessness here in our great state. But more than that, to make sure that we find ways every single day to lift up and honor our military families and those who have served. We're happy to take questions on topic at this time. If there are any. Okay. Yeah. Secretary Santiago? Yeah, sure, there is no legislative <coughs> vehicle required. These are ARPA funds. Uh, these have been disseminated to each cabinet. And so, you know, we at our Executive Office of Veterans Services had $20 million. And in consultation with Secretary Augustus and with the leadership of Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, we thought the best use of our money was to support our veteran community and their housing agenda. So there, uh, the proposal is five pillars. <clears throat> there will be multiple RFPs that will be coming out in short order, um, but that's the plan. How many units are you considering? And to some degree, I'm how many would you stand 
Yeah, so it's unclear right now. As we know, there's a significant housing supply issue in the Commonwealth. Every day I'm around the community in Boston, throughout the Commonwealth, there are a variety of veteran service providers, some are in this room today, who come at me and say, we have a school, we have a building, eight units, 10 units here. And oftentimes, the veteran service provider, they don't have the technical assistance to write the grant, to find the support they needed. So we thought putting at least $10 million into this capital investment was the right thing to do to really expedite some of that creative thinking that is happening in the cities and towns across the Commonwealth, particularly in our veteran serving communities. It's only ARPA dollars or there are state funding? So it's primarily ARPA dollars. I will say, I think it's pillar four. Currently right now, there is a flex fund that we offer out of our, uh, the GAA to support supportive services in the veteran community. Things like uh, food vouchers, transportation, those important wraparound services that as Senator Edwards noted, are completely, entirely crucial to getting our veterans a place to stay or preventing displacement. So we offer those services right now. It's about aligning them more appropriately with our goals in this campaign. Mr. Secretary, you mentioned the survey number, 545 That's an excellent question. So that number is the PIT number, the point in time count. So that's a once a year, number that uh, Mayor Wu, I think it's January 4th, whenever you go out, you start counting veterans. That number actually, thanks to leadership of the Patrick administration, Secretary Nee, I believe is here, that number has gone down significantly over the past 10 years. I wanna say 10 years ago, it was about 1,000, 1,200, and then it steadily climbed down. It has stagnated. It's been about 500, 600 for the past three, four years, perhaps due to COVID, perhaps due to some other issues as well. But we felt that we are so close to getting veterans housed. And I'll just say that 545, that doesn't mean 545 are unsheltered. 545, the majority of which are in transitional housing as well. Of that 545, 33 are unsheltered. Now that's an imperfect number, um, but we're gonna be as evidence-based and data-driven as possible. There are a variety of other uh, indicators that we'll be using, but using that number <clears throat> in conjunction with the veteran service providers and some of our community partners, most notably the COCs, um, we're looking to drive that number down. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Great.